In this list we're looking at the SC making the sound and down the bottom of the page it says SC is the Latin spelling for S. So you'll know that these words are commonly from the Latin language. So let's go through. We've got scent, seen, scissors, crescent, fascinate. Now, if you have a look here, we've got an E after the C, making that sure that we give it, or an I, making sure that we give it that sound. In crescent, we've actually got the S and the C making the Z sound. Um, so it also says down here that S and C may both say S, but they may also say Z. Crescent. Um, in scissors, we've got that double S and the S at the end making the Z sound, whereas that SC at the start is making the S sound. Uh, fascinate works quite easily. Then in the following ones, we have a silent B. So you'll find it very difficult to pronounce that B. Um, that's why it's become silent over time. So we've got debt, doubt, subtle, succumb, and then yacht is, we've just put that in as an extra word. Um, sometimes we can't find enough silent um, letter words and also we couldn't find enough words with the SC in it for the sound. So we've used this Dutch word for a sailing vessel, which is yacht. So we've got y. Now we know after a W, a WH or a QU, we're allowed to use an a for the ot sound and that also applies after a Y but the only word that it works with is yacht so um, that's why we've popped it in here it's a word all on its own now the CH would be a guttural sound that you'd make sounds like someone's going to spit or vomit on you it's like Huck. we can't make that sound easy so when we say yacht we leave out that sound but when we write the word we must still put in those two letters that the Dutch would put into that word now, so let's have a look at the other things that we can see happening within these words. Um, we've highlighted the SC and then the silent B. The other things you can see in here is you've got the E making the previous E make a long sound. You've got the double S after a short vowel sound there. OR at the end, and we're making a plural. We don't, we don't usually say scissor, we say scissors. It's always used in its plural form. Um, crescent, there's nothing we, in there. We know that we're using the C for the cut sound here because there's an R after it. Now, if we're going to break fascinate R, we can do it quite easily. Fas, at is a short sound, so we close the syllable with a consonant. Sin is a short vowel sound, it, so we close the syllable with a consonant, and then we've got eight at the end. So it'd be fas, sin, eight. Now in depth there's nothing, in doubt you've got the OU, in subtle we're using the LE for the UL sound after a stop consonant. So that's a rule we've covered quite frequently um, in many of the lists. So uh, a stop consonant always has LE after it. And if we split that into syllables we'd have subtle, so the B would go here because that's a short sound and we'd have to close the, the syllable off with that consonant. Now the T, L, E, the only reason really that that E is there, as we've discussed before, is because every syllable must have a vowel. So that's why that E is prompt on the end there. Now succumb, we've got, uh, we can split that between the two consonants. Not very often you see double C in a word, it's very rare, but this is one such occasion and what we've already discussed. So let's go through and look at what these <coughs> words mean. So a scent is a smell, it could be pleasant or unpleasant. A scene is a place where an incident occurs um, or it could be a sequence of action in a movie or a play or a book too. So you can quite often imagine a scene in your head as well. Um, scissors are a tool that we use to cut with. A crescent is a shape, it's a curved shape like the moon. Fascinate is when you show a lot of interest in something. A debt is when you owe someone money or something. Um, doubt is when you question something, you're not sure about something. Subtle means it's not obvious. And succumb means to give in to. So you might 
have bought a chocolate that you're trying to save, but you finally succumb to eating it, means you give in and you eat it. And we've discussed what a yacht is. Now don't forget at the end that you have to um, read and syllabify or sound the words, spell them, cover them, write them and check them. You're practicing your running writing, so it goes set, set, S-C-E-N-T, and you cover it and write it. You can finish the rest of those spaces off. In these words, we're highlighting the SC in these words and just the silent B in these ones, and in your the silent CH. So let's go through. We've got scent, seen, scissors, crescent, fascinate, debt, doubt, subtle, succumb, and yacht. Now, in this section, you have to fill in the gaps with the correct list words, which are these. And then down the bottom, we're doing some work on homophones, so you have to write the correct word below to show that they are um, they have different meanings and also you recognise that they're spelt differently. That's what makes them a homophone. They sound quite similar, but they mean different things and they're spelt differently. So you've got scene, scene, sense, 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 sense. Um, descent, descend, and decent. In these words, we've got the SC making that sound in scent, seam, scissors, present, and in fascinate, we've actually broken those um, two into a S plus a C sound. Um, in these bottom ones, we've got a silent um, B in debt, doubt, subtle, succumb. And in yacht, we've got a silent CH because we can't make that guttural um, sound that the CH would, should form in that word. Now, in, these, uh, in this exercise here, you have to add an adjective to these list words. So think about that. Um, verb families, you know what to do here. You write the base word, you write it with the S or the um, S on the end, the ing on the end, and usually the ED on the end here. Fill in the gaps with the list word or extension. Now you're going to add to these base words. It, you could be forming a noun, a verb, an adjective or an adverb. So just be careful. Um, and you might need to discuss that within your group. This day four is on prepositional phrases. So a prepositional phrase begins with a preposition and ends with the object of the preposition. So the object is always a noun or a pronoun. So some examples are up the stairs. So the preposition would be up and the object would be the stairs, around the block, under my bed, behind the door, in front of the car, behind, between the trees, next to the stairs, above the fridge. So they're just examples of some prepositional phrases. Now you need to go through these sentences and highlight the prepositional phrase in each one and then use that instruction there to finish these drawings over here. Now be careful because the wording of these, um, the prepositions we've used in here are very important as to where you draw the, the bone um, over on these illustrations. Now down the bottom you have to fill in the gaps with a prepositional phrase to match the cats. So we've got lots of cats scattered through the picture and they're numbered. So number one sentence refers to number one cat. And we've filled this one in for you. You've got to give the adjective first, then the preposition, and then the object. So the adjectives are always going to be describing the particular cat at that number. So number one cat is angry. You might say number two cat is sleepy or whatever. Um, so the angry cat is next to, so there's the preposition coming next. The tall bookshelf is the object. So you've got to give the adjective, the preposition, and then the object in each of these sentences.